Here we're gonna look at a problem from the 2001 Putnam exam, and this is problem B2. Okay, so let's look at the statement. So our goal is to find all real numbers X and Y, such that the following system of equations is satisfied. So we've got one over X plus one over two Y equals X squared plus three Y times three X squared plus Y. And then we have one over X minus one over two Y equals two times Y to the fourth minus X to the fourth. And before we jump into our solution, I wanna give you guys some hints. So maybe my first hint is that since this is asking for solutions in the real numbers, this probably means that there are no solutions in rational numbers or integers or natural numbers. Obviously, this is not a sure thing, but I think the fact that the solution is being asked, asked over the real numbers is a hint towards this fact, which means you're probably gonna have to take some sort of root or something. And for the next hint, I wanna notice that we can very, very quickly turn this into a system of polynomial equations, if each of which is degree five. So we can clearly add and subtract these two equations and notice that the left-hand side will get rid of one of these terms and then after clearing the denominators we'll have degree 5 polynomials but degree 5 polynomials are famously not solvable solvable by radicals in general so that tells you that there's probably some sort of obvious factorization trick. And so since there isn't a general way to factor these things involving radicals and stuff, but this um, system of equations is possibly solvable, then it will only be solvable by some sort of obvious factorization, or at least that's the hint kind of built into the wording of this problem. Okay, so maybe go ahead and give this problem a go with these two hints, and then we'll come back with a solution. Okay, hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look at a solution. So I went ahead and numbered my two equations, one and two. And notice if I add the two equations, then I can eliminate this one over two y term. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So notice if we do equation one plus equation two, what are we gonna get? And so we're gonna get one over x plus one over x, that'll be two over x and then one over two y minus one over two y, that's gonna cancel, and then we'll have this thing over here. So this is gonna be x squared plus three y squared times three x squared plus y squared plus two times y to the fourth minus x to the fourth. So we have something like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and expand out the right-hand side of this and see what we have. So if we FOIL this thing out, notice we're gonna get three X to the fourth. And then we're going to have, let's see, it's gonna be nine X squared Y squared plus one X squared Y squared. So that's gonna be plus 10 X squared Y squared. And then finally, we're gonna have plus three Y to the fourth. And then next we have plus two Y to the fourth minus two X to the fourth. And now we're gonna do a couple of steps at once. So I wanna combine this three X to the fourth, this two X to the fourth. So let's maybe do that like this in red. So that will cancel this thing and give us a one X to the fourth. And then we'll also combine this three Y to the fourth and this two Y to the fourth. So I'll cancel that out and I'll make it a five Y to the fourth. And then next, I'll also multiply both sides of the equation by x to get rid of our x here. So let's see, that's going to give us 2 equals x to the fifth plus 10x cubed y squared plus 5xy to the fourth. So we have something like that. So that's what we get from adding equation 1 and equation 2. So now let's see what we get from subtracting equation one and equation two. And the motivation for that is we are going to cancel this one over x term. So let's see, if we do um, one over x minus one over x, that cancels. Then we have one over two y minus one over two y. So that's gonna give us two over two y, which is just one over y. So we have one over y equals so this um, right-hand side is gonna be nearly the same, it's just with a minus two times y to the fourth minus x to the fourth, so let's see. We've got x squared plus three y squared times three x squared plus y squared, 
and then minus two y to the fourth minus x to the fourth. So we've got something like that going on. Okay, so now let's expand out the right hand side of this and then we'll do the same kind of thing where we multiply by y, but we'll do that a little bit at a time. So notice here we're gonna have three x to the fourth um, plus 10 x squared y squared plus three y to the fourth. And so that's from foiling out this thing right here. That's not too hard to see. And then we've got minus two y to the fourth plus two x to the fourth. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and combine like terms on the right hand side. So we can take this two x to the fourth and combine it with this three x to the fourth giving us five x to the fourth. And then next we can combine this three y to the fourth and this negative 2y to the fourth giving us a 1y to the fourth. So there, we've got a 1y to the fourth. Now next, we can multiply both sides by y, and that's going to give us 1 equals, so we'll have 5x to the fourth times y plus 10x squared y cubed, and then plus y to the fifth. Okay, so that's what we're left with here. Okay, so now I'm gonna hang on to these two equations, so this one and this one, and then we'll see what we can do to manipulate these two equations to come up with something that will bring us towards a solution. But I'll maybe go ahead and clean up the board and bring these two equations to the top. Okay, so on the last board, we manipulated these two given equations into these two equations. So we've got x to the fifth plus 10x cubed y squared plus 5xy to the fourth equals two. Then we have 5x to the fourth y plus 10x squared y cubed plus y to the fifth equals one. The important thing to know here is that everything here is of degree five when you add up the x degree and the y degree. And that's actually really going to help us out. And then if we look closely at our coefficients, we'll see that they are all binomial coefficients. In fact, if we go over here and draw Pascal's triangle real quick, so we've got um, one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one, and then finally, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, we'll see that this guy right here corresponds to taking x plus y to the fifth power. So notice this would be like the coefficient of x to the fifth, this would be the coefficient of x to the fourth times y, and then so on and so forth down the line. And so that's actually extremely helpful because we can get an object with all of those terms in there if we add and subtract these two equations. So let's maybe name these. Maybe we'll name this equation three and this equation four kind of after our naming convention over there and see what we get from adding and subtracting these equations. So let's take three plus four, and I'm gonna order this um, in some sort of obvious increasing or decreasing order in terms of x's or y's. So I'm gonna write this as x to the fifth plus five x to the fourth y plus 10 x cubed y squared plus 10 x squared y cubed plus five x y to the fourth plus y to the fifth equals two plus one is three. So notice I've got an increasing power of y as we go to the right and a decreasing power of x as we go to the right. But then, well, if you're trained in the ways of math contests, you can easily see that the left-hand side of the equation is a binomial expansion of x plus y to the fifth. So just like I hinted at over there, we can take this entire um, left-hand side and write it as x plus y to the fifth power equals three. But that tells us what x plus y is. So we've got x plus y equals the fifth root of three. And since fifth powers and fifth roots are one-to-one -one functions, that means that's our only uh, solution for x plus y here. So we're like solving for x plus y. Okay, so now let's do the parallel thing with equation three minus equation four and see what we get there. So again, I'm gonna order it the same way in decreasing powers of x and increasing powers of y. So that's gonna give me x to the fifth 
minus 5x to the fourth y plus 10x cubed y squared minus 10x squared y cubed plus 5xy to the fourth minus y to the fifth equals 2 minus 1, but that's going to be 1. Okay, fantastic. But again, if you're well-trained in the ways of math contests, this should look pretty familiar. That's also the sum of, or sorry, that's also the expansion of a binomial. But in this case, it's the expansion of the binomial x minus y to the fifth. So we have x minus y to the fifth equals one. But that's gonna tell us that we have x minus y equals the fifth root of one, but that's gonna be equal to one. Obviously, there are gonna be more fifth roots if we have complex numbers here, but notice we were restricted to real numbers. So I guess the fact that we had real numbers here hinted at the fact that something like this fifth root of three would show up. Notice that's not a rational number but also the fact that we have real numbers here says that we don't have to worry about the complex fifth roots of one. So that's actually helpful. And the complex fifth roots of three. Okay, so now check it out. We've got a system of two equations and two unknowns. We have x plus y equals root three and x minus y equals one. Now we can take those two equations and maybe add and subtract them and see what we get. So let's maybe call this one equation five and this one equation six. So notice if we do equation five plus equation six, that's gonna cancel out the y and we'll have two x equals the fifth root of three plus one. But from there, we can just easily write down that x is equal to one half and then the fifth root of three plus one, like that. And then we can do the same thing. So equation five minus equation six, that's gonna give us two y equals the fifth root of three minus one. But now we can just go ahead and write what y down is. So y is equal to the fifth root of three minus one over two. So now we've got our two solutions, or I guess our one solution, which is a pair of values for x and y. We've got x is half fifth root of three plus one, and y is half fifth root of three minus one. And that's a good place to stop.